Just as a reality check, let us now compute the homology of the Klein bottle again, but this time not using the collapse sequence of a CNDR, but instead the Maya Vitoris sequence for push outs. So we will apply the Maya Vitoris sequence to the following push out, the same as before. We have the inclusion of the boundary of the Möbius strip into the Möbius strip twice, and the corresponding push out is the Klein bottle. And uh, this push out satisfies all the conditions of the Maya Vitoris sequence because this inclusion here is a closed neighborhood deformation retract. All right, so let us now put down the long exact sequence coming from um, the theorem on the Maya Vitoris sequence. Okay, and now we play the usual game and identify as many groups as possible. So let's see. Again, the Möbius strip is just homotopy equivalent to the circle, therefore it definitely has no third homology, therefore this, oh, I want to draw this in red. Therefore this direct sum is just zero. And the circle also doesn't have, yeah, okay, so the boundary of the Möbius strip is not only homotopy equivalent, it's homeomorphic to the circle, so this one is also zero because it doesn't have any second homology. Um, the circle again has no second homology, so by homotopy invariance, this one is also zero. Then here, for the first time, something happens. So H1 of the circle, that's Z. Again, here also. So this is Z plus Z. Here's the group we're interested in. And finally, since H still denotes singular homology, we know what happens in degree zero. We just count the connected components and all those, uh, sorry, path components. And all those spaces are path connected, so therefore this will just be Z. This will be Z plus Z. And well, this is already then one group we know about. The zeroth homology group of the Klein bottle is also just Z. Okay, so this is sort of what we knew before. And now let us draw conclusions. And the first conclusion is again, here's the zero module. So this arrow is zero. Here's the zero module. So this arrow is zero. So H3 of K is appearing in between two zero arrows. So it must be zero by exactness. So let's see what else do we got. Um, right. So we've got a zero arrow here because this object here is zero. And now we've got a couple of morphisms which we really need to identify. Right. So maybe the first one we should discuss is the one below here. So what does an arrow induce in zero degree homology? And actually this is something that you already did for, for us. Namely, um, it just matters which path components are mapped to which path component, but in this case that it's just a map on the level of spaces between path, con path connected spaces, this just induces the identity and this holds for both direct summons. So therefore this is just the map X going to X comma X, the diagonal map yeah, with respect to this direct sum decomposition. And this we did in exercise five one. Okay, so this is just a diagonal map from Z to Z plus Z. And the good thing about this map is it's injective. Yeah, so this is an injective morph morphism of Z modules. And in a long exact or in an exact sequence, this has the consequence that the previous arrow must be zero. So this one here is zero. And then we see, um, right, then we see we need to identify yet another morphism in this sequence, namely the one going from here to here. So I use this isomorphism to Z here by saying the Möbius strip deformation retracts onto the middle circle. Yeah? But what happens with the inclusion of the boundary under this homotopy equivalence? Well, actually, in that case, the boundary maps twice around this middle circle. Yeah, the Möbius strip has the property that it winds sort of, if you wind once around the whole, um, the whole strip and then you deformation retract this map to the middle part of the Möbius strip, then actually you just wind around twice this middle circle. 
And therefore, on the level of spaces, yeah, if we just identify now these groups with H1S1 and H1S1 um, under this homotope equivalence, then this is just the map that takes Z to Z to the, to Z to the 2. So the map that winds around the circle twice. And for this map, we fortunately already made the computation in the last video. And we know that this in homology just induces multiplication by 2. And the same argument goes for the other direct summand. And therefore, this map is just x going to 2x comma 2x. Yeah, so this is by our previous um, video. So maybe I should put it down that we don't forget what, what the reason is. So this is because the degree, if you want, or did, didn't define degree, did we? Well, we didn't, right? <laughs> okay, so let me just say that um, H1 of the map Z Z to the Z square of this map this is the same as multiplication by two. Yeah? So it's two times the identity if you want. All right, and now what can we say about this map? Well, if I take an integer, I multiply it by two and do this in both coordinates. Well, that's definitely an injective map again, which has the consequence that the previous arrow in the long exact sequence is also zero. So this allows for another conclusion because now this H2K, this group under interest, again occurs between two zero arrows and therefore this homology is just zero. So we're almost there, we've got H0, we've got H2, we know that H3 is zero anyway, so the last one uh, in question is H1K. And now the situation is as follows. We have a zero arrow here, so maybe see the pointer, and we have a zero arrow here, and in between we've got three terms. So yet again, a short exact sequence occurs within this long exact sequence. But this time, the group in question is not the middle group, but it's the third, the, the right-hand group. Yeah? And this has the effect that this group here is the quotient of the middle group by the previous group. Yeah? So this is isomorphic to this mod this. And still, we now have to compute H1K as the quotient of this middle term by um, the left-hand term. Yeah? So, in other words, we have to compute what is Z plus Z mod out the image of this map. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Z plus Z mod the image of this map. Well, that would be all elements of the form, well, no, let me just write it, 2x, 2x minus 2x, where x is in z. Okay, so this is the group we have to compute now. And, well, secretly, we already know what it should be, so let's prove that this is actually true. So let us find an isomorphism of groups to z plus z mod 2. Yeah, so this is now the claim. This should be an isomorphism. Okay, so how do we define this? Let's just make, try and make an ad hoc argument. So here we've got equivalence classes of those pairs here. So let me take a pair A comma B. Yeah. And I have to end up here with um, an integer and such a class mod 2. And this should of course be well defined. So this should be A plus B. And uh, the second term should now be something in Z mod 2 and well I just take the residue class of B. Okay, so various things need attention now. So we want this to be an isomorphism of group. First thing, is it a well-defined uh, map of maps, a uh, map of sets, sorry, <laughs> map of sets? And this is true, right? Because two elements only, only differ by such an element of the form, an even number comma minus the even number. But um, if I uh, form the sum here, this cancels out. So this is definitely a well-defined map of sets. And here, well, there's nothing to worry about well-definedness here. I just, um, oh, there is something about well-definedness <laughs> well to worry about, but right. So the second coordinate also will only differ by an even number if I add an element from this subgroup. And therefore, this will also be zero in this quotient here. So mm -hmm. this is still well-defined. So it's a well-defined map of sets. 
why is it a group homomorphism? I think this is clear, clear. because yeah. it's defined just linearly. So, I mean, you could do the computation, but it's really not worth the trouble. It's also obviously subjective, I would say. Do injectivity. So we already discussed that it is a group homomorphism, so we can decide on injectivity by considering the kernel. So what's the kernel? So if an element maps to zero, so if a plus b comma b is zero in this group, what does it mean? Well, in the first coordinate, it means that a equals minus b. Yeah, a plus b equals to zero means, means, means a equals minus b. And in the second coordinate, it means that b is an even number, yeah, because the class reduced mod two is zero if it's an even number, so b is even. But then we see that actually um, the pair a comma b lies in this group well, in the group that's written there, two x comma minus two x, where x is in z. Yeah. So <coughs> these two conditions just say the two coordinates only differ by sign and they are even. Yeah. Because I mean, this means they differ by sign. This is the first thing, and both are even, so they look like this. <laughs> Always blackboard confusion here, but this precisely means now that a b is zero in this group. Yeah, and this it's the trivial coset. So a b equals zero up there. So the kernel is trivial and therefore the group is uh, the homomorphism is injective. And yeah, this is all we wanted to show. So you see that two different ways lead to a solution of of the same problem. <laughs>